I apologize for my voice. I know how terrible it sounds, but I've been sick for quite a few days with high fever, cough, and all that jazz. And it seems like my voice isn't yet aware that I'm feeling better. So I'm just gonna leave her in her ignorance, I guess. Um, so, um, okay. I'm Franny and welcome back to my channel. Today I would like to share with you all the books that I got in October and November so basically this is kind of a fall book haul which rhymes. Ugh. I don't remember when I bought which books so I'm just gonna show them to you randomly and go from there. The first one I have here is The Accidental Woman by Jonathan Coe. I read number 11 by Jonathan Coe back in November and I absolutely adored it. I will leave the link to my November wrap-up down below in case you're interested in knowing more about it, but I was absolutely in love with that book. It was brilliant, it was genius, and I wanted to read something else by Jonathan Coe, and I think that this is his debut novel. It might be, it's very short, which is also one of the reasons why I picked it up. He has written a lot of books, a lot of long books. And I'm not in the mood for long books right now, maybe because exams are coming up and I'm studying more and I just cannot, I cannot do long books right now. But anyways, it's his debut novel, it's short, and the third reason why I decided to go with this book as you know, my next Jonathan Coe book is because it says here on the back that Maria is a young woman unable to control the direction of her life. Will it end as it began by accident or will something intervene to save the accidental woman from herself? That is appealing to me. I love this cover. It is so classy and I cannot wait to read this. Then I have two books that I have already showed to you in my November TBR so I'll be very quick about it. They are the Italian editions of um, The Tie That Binds by Kent Arif. The Italian title is Dincoli. And the next one is La Maledizione di Melmoth by Sarah Perry, which is Melmoth. Now, since I'm pre-filming this, I don't know if I have finished Melmoth in November. I can't tell because I'm not a seer, but uh, in case I did finish it, the link to my November wrap-up is down below in case I haven't. I'll soon talk about it, but you definitely won't find this book in my November wrap-up because I didn't get to it, because I'm just hopeless when it comes to TBRs and books that I actually read during the months, but I still cannot wait to read this because I loved um, Our Souls at Night by Ken Tarif, so I really want to get to another book of his, and this is going to be next, in the near future. There are also two more Italian books that I purchased and these are written by Italian authors. Please let me know in the comments if you want me to show you the Italian books that I get and that I read if you want to hear about them in my monthly wrap-ups because I don't know if you guys might be interested since they haven't been translated into English or into other languages, let me know in the comments so I know from now on how to deal with that because I don't want to bore you guys or talk to you about books that you cannot read but you might still be interested. Just let me know in the comments. Anyways, the books are La Testa Tra Le Nuvole by Susanna Tamaro. She is quite famous in Italy and uh, I'm, I have no idea what this book is about but I went to a used bookstore and I found it and the title just appealed to me, I guess. The title refers to the saying, you know, head lost in the clouds and that's me in a nutshell. And the other one is Ladri di Foglie by Davide van des Fros. And again, I know nothing about this book but the fact that it might be narrated from the wind's perspective. If that is the case, that could be very interesting to read and I'm curious and we'll, we'll see if that's I, or I'll see. I don't know. Let me know in the comments, you guys, because I really don't know if you're interested or not. And both ways, it's fine with me, just let me know. Another used Italian edition that I bought is The Rajah's Diamond by Robert Louis Stevenson. 
I think that this is a short story slash novella. I saw it and I was like, oh my gosh, Stevenson, I want it. And so I bought it. It's fairly short. I think it's less than 50 pages. Wait, it's 100 pages. Oh my gosh. I thought it was shorter. Okay, it's 100 pages, but it's still kind of a novella short story thing. And yeah, never heard of it, but it's Stevenson and I love the Treasure Island. So. We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. I've already read this, so if you want to know more, my October wrap-up down below. The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. Kazuo Ishiguro won the Nobel Prize back in 2017, and I really wanted to read something by him, and I haven't yet, which is not good at all. This novel in particular sounded very um, Downton Abbey-ish to me, and Downton Abbey is kind of a synonym to Christmas, according to me. So I'm not sure exactly when I'll be reading this one, but definitely this winter, because it just has a winter feel to me. Perhaps if you guys have read it, you can confirm that it's wintry-like, or perhaps that I should read this in summer. I have no idea, but yeah, I'll be reading this one this winter. Nobody's going to stop me. Next is an absolute beauty. Um, and it is And the Ocean Was Our Sky by Patrick Ness. Finally, it came in the mail and I have it and I'm just so happy about it. This is Patrick Ness's most recent publication and it should be a retelling of uh, Moby Dick, but it is um, from the point of view of the whale and it is illustrated and it has gorgeous illustrations in it. My voice is abandoning me, please don't. Uh, they're just absolutely gorgeous. I, I I love them so much, oh my god. They're beautiful. It is illustrated by Rovina Kai, I think. Um, and yeah, it's beautiful. It's Patrick Ness. I'm just, I'm beyond excited for this one. With And the Ocean Was Our Sky came Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I'm currently reading this book. By the time you see this video, I might be done with this. I don't know, we'll see, but it's still going to be in my December wrap-up. And Skyward is the first book in a YA sci-fi series. I don't know if it's going to be a trilogy or a quartet or a duology. I have no idea whatsoever, but it is going to be a series because with Brendan Sanderson, it's just, it's always a series. But yes, um, I'm liking it so far. There are some flaws, I think, here and there. I plan on doing a video review for this book because it's Brendan Sanderson, so I think I'll have quite a few things to say. You'll definitely hear more about this one. Okay, the book that I'm about to show you, I haven't seen much of it around, which surprises me because it is a debut novel, but it's very peculiar and original and relevant today. And it is The Map of Salt and Stars by I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce her name because I would butcher it and I really really don't want to because I would feel too bad about it But yes, um, I haven't seen oh my god <clears throat> My voice is lost. Oh my god First I the cover is absolutely gorgeous, but this synopsis is even better and more appealing than that. It says here, in the summer of 2011, just after Noor loses her father to cancer, her mother moves Noor and her sisters to um, from New York City back to Syria to be closer to their family. It also says here that something will happen and they will have to flee across seven different countries. And the great incredible thing about this book is that it is in prose, but it is divided in seven different sections, you know, for the different countries that they cross. And for each different section, there's poetry in the beginning, written in the shape of the country. This one, for instance, is Syria. Um, there's also... I saw Egypt before. I can't find Egypt! I found Libya, though. 
<laughs> so I guess we're gonna go with Libya and there are also the two different timelines you know the one in 2011 and the other one is the girl in the 20th century trying to be a map maker I will say I am a little bit intimidated just because there's a lot going on for us in the synopsis like there's a lot of premise a lot of expectations building up so I hope that it delivers I hope that it does justice to all that it's promised so I'll have to see and let you know how it goes and last but not least I have to show you a book that might not I mean it is nonfiction and not everybody would read it I guess it's a very niche book it borders on the academic text um, and it's something that I'm reading for my thesis or final paper or however you guys call the you know the thing that you have to write at the end of the bachelor degree to graduate and it is a conservative <laughs> walks into a bar the politics of political humor now I haven't yet decided exactly what my paper is going to be on but I do want to do something about politics and more specifically about political satire and political humor and this is one of the texts that I found that dealt with that topic but if you guys know about any other book that I might read whether it is fiction or non-fiction, it doesn't matter, that it deals heavily with politics and with political satire, political humor, if you have read any articles that deal with that topic, if you know about anything that might help me, please share it with me um, in the comments down below because I still haven't figured out exactly what I want to do, but the more I read, I think the more I'll be able to figure out my approach, my the perspective that I want to analyze, I guess. But yeah, I'm currently reading this. I'm at the very beginning. I think I'm 20 pages in. So far, it's interesting. It's talking about why there are more liberal comedians than conservative comedians. It's talking about how late shows and political comedy is incredibly important today and it has such a huge influence on voters how satire can be confused with the news what is the purpose of one and the purpose of the other um, how it can affect elections or you know political communication in its wider spectrum so it's very interesting it's something that I'm very passionate about and once again if you have any suggestion, any recommendation whatsoever, please let me know in the comments because it's a passion of mine and because it might help me with my paper. We're at the end. I have no more books to show you. My voice is just... I can't speak anymore. So thank you guys for watching this video. I apologize once again for my voice. I know that it was pain. I know. I feel you. I'm sorry. But yeah, so let me know in the comments if you're interested about any of the books that I've showed you. If you have read some of them, let me know in the comments if you have any ideas about my paper, <laughs> about books or texts that I might read for my paper. Let me know in the comments because you guys know that I love talking to you and thank you again for sticking with me throughout this painful video and I'll see you soon with another one. Warm hugs!